the den. So go tell a friend. The best podcast on earth is about to begin. We got jokes and news and movie reviews. After dark and NC-17 with the crew. Interviews with the best artists around. So like, comment, subscribe. The show starting right now. Let's go. Like, comment, subscribe. The show starting right now. Welcome to Down in the Den. It's your boy, Mars, and we are back again for the number one podcast. We have the most talented creatives in the game, and today I am honored to have a young producer who you may not know the face, but you definitely know the tunes. The wonderful, amazing Kid Nick. I'm going to call you Kid for short. Sure. Welcome to the den. How are you doing this afternoon? I am feeling so good, so happy. Um... Just feeling like super excited to meet with you. And I've been watching your video interview and I just generally enjoy your spirit. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that's what we're all about here. We're all about highlighting some of these amazing artists, producers, singers, songwriters, directors, creatives in general, because it's Mm -hmm. just something that I feel creativity makes the world go around. It's what separates us from the champs. It's the the good stuff. So we have... A tradition here. I'm a big comic book nerd. I actually learned to read on, uh, my brother gave me a Batman comic book when I was probably three or four, and, and that I wanted to read to know what was going on. Love that. So I've always noticed, I, I consider creatives superheroes. So I've always noticed that superheroes always have a origin story, be it a damn radioactive bug bite, or <laughs> coming from a planet or something. What is your origin story? How did you get into production? How did you find your passion for making music? Ah, that's a really good question. So with my origin stories, I actually didn't start producing until about, uh, seriously, about a year and a half ago. But I have been practicing music since I was about seven years old. So uh, my mom, she actually played like a little bit of piano because her older sister taught her and she was able to play things by ear. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of picked up playing by ear and she was like, hold up, you kind of have a knack for this. Like, let me put you into some serious lessons. So at age seven, she, you know, put me into classical piano lessons and I didn't like it at first. I absolutely hated it because I didn't want to leave my bed on Saturday. I want to watch cartoons. But, you know, she was like, no, you're going to piano lessons like 9 a.m. every Saturday. Um, And then I just stuck with it. I just stuck with it for a really, really long time. Um, I ended up eventually picking up a little bit of guitar when I was around 13, 14. And then I I joined choirs. I, I did like music for the orchestra for the theater shows at my high school and just on and on um and then in these last couple of years the production bug just really bit me and i was like you know what we're in a pandemic i'm at home a lot um i'm not going outside as much so i'm kind of saving a little bit of money here and there let me just buy my equipment and really just give this a try and then I just ended up falling in love with it. Awesome. How many instruments in total do you play? I know you mentioned keys, guitar. Um, so I play piano, that's my main instrument. I I've, I've messed around with the organ a little bit, but I'm not too fluent on that. And then I'm I play gonna be a honest, I, I'm trying to think what the hell is an organ? I'm like, an organ, is that the big <laughs> thing they play in church, right? And, yeah, yeah. Oh my absolutely. god, that makes the dopest sounds of all these like haunted house or, or whatever. Okay. <laughs> Oh, no, absolutely. But the thing with the organ is that I I, I don't know if everyone knows, but there's also foot pedals like a regular piano just has three. But the organ actually has keys. So you're just like they're looking, you know, marionette kind of just playing all these at once. And it's just very intimidating. Very, very intimidating. (laughs) With most instruments, as a person that I I like to call coordination challenge, uh, Mm -hmm. I've always wanted um, to play instruments. But I I remember my um, now in retrospect. It's kind of creepy, but my music teacher, she mm-hmm. used to always say I had the, the perfect size hands for piano. She was like, you have really big hands. And now I think about it, I was like, I was a child. That was kind of creepy, but okay. It, it is a little bit. I'm not a little bit or whatever, but I just didn't have the patience. I couldn't read music. I could play a little bit by ear, but I mm-hmm. couldn't play. I couldn't read music. Mm-hmm. So I always ask this, especially for producers, did you learn everything by ear? Or did you eventually go in and learn how to read music or is it still everything by ear? So I started off maybe when I was like 
five or six mostly by ear. And then I learned how to actually read music. Um, and then once I learned so much about reading music, I was kind of um, bored of classical music and I wanted to play like pop and R&B and like my teacher didn't want to hear that stuff. So I was like, right. forget it, I'm a learner on my own. So I would just like go online and, and listen to recordings or listen to old CDs over and over again and then learn how to play things by ear. So it's very self-taught, very, very self-taught. But now if I hear a song on the radio, like by the end of the song, I could like figure out the chords and probably play along. I love that. I love that. Now, I always believe that every great artist, we stand on the shoulders of the giants that came before us. Who are Mm -hmm. some of the artists that just inspire you to do what you do? Oh, man. Um, Definitely some Al Green. Like, my dad really, really loved Al Green. Um, Thought he was like a master at vocal stacking. So I really appreciate his artistry. Um, I grew up listening to, of course, some Marvin Gaye um, and also some like Jamaican, like reggae classics like Barry Salmon, but also Love Beanie Man too. Like I listened to to everything you could think of in terms of, I guess, more on the hip hop side. Um, I was listening to actually a lot of uh, a lot of Southern trap. <laughs> OK, right. to good, some some good Southern trap for a band, of course, like New York classics. L. Cool J, uh, uh, like J Lo, of course, from the Bronx, Fat Joe, all of that. So, um, we were listening to a lot of that pocket of hip hop, early 2000s and some 90s hip hop for sure. Golden Air, Golden Air. Those yeah. are some oppressive uh, names you listed off there. You don't really hear uh, the Mar- obviously, you know, he's a legend, but you don't really hear the Marvin Gaye's, the Al Green's mm-hmm. uh, anymore um, because unfortunately, a lot of the artists, they, they're in here to make a quick buck. Yeah. They don't have yeah. a love for the music, so they don't even know the history. Uh, so when I ask that question, I ask a lot, you know, who are some of your inspirations? And I'm like, that's your damn same. They're the same age as you. How can someone <laughs> <laughs> inspire you? And they're the same. They came out two weeks before you, you know. So I know. That's very, very scary. Now, one of the biggest um aspects that I love about music. And I, I used to dabble in music um, long ago uh, before I, I was really good at rapping in the 90s when, when when we had just come off when people were rapping. Like, I went to the store and I got some, <laughs> you know, sucker MC. So in that area, I was like a beast. I was like, oh, man, I, I know compound syllables. here. And then yes, probably like 94 when like Nas came out, I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and retire. This is <laughs> this isn't something I can do uh, very well. But one of the beautiful things about music is the collaborative spirit. Are there mm-hmm. any artists out there that you have collaborated or you wish to collaborate with that you just feel like you would be a musical marriage made in heaven? Oh my God! Um, well, first off, I just want to give a, a small shout out because I just collaborated with Love Child on a song called World Tour, and she's absolutely fantastic. Um, so I just want to give a quick shout out to her. But some people who are um, in the game right now, this is there's this artist that I've been following for like the last year. Her name is Leia. She okay. is dope. Um, has this wonderful '90s sound that's a little bit reminiscent of um, Missy Elliott, which is also one of my big inspirations. Missy Elliott, uh, the uh, VA. yeah, man, uh, Brandy for sure. All of those influences, a little bit of Aaliyah. Uh, really like her. There's another artist named Duran Bernard, who is this incredible um, vocalist. Um, another singer named Jay Hort. So this is a little bit more in the R&B sort of pocket, like some East Coast R&B pocket. Um, but I, I feel like there's also so many women rappers now. I want to work with, like every woman rapper that's out right now. There's so much talent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let me know. We we know a ton of them. <laughs> One thing that we're all about is making those connections. We've made so many musical love connections and they're like man mars thank you so much for hooking me up i got a pretty decent ear so if you're looking for a particular genre let me know I'll absolutely probably, i probably have somebody that you love to work with now moving forward what's on your horizon you're out there producing you're out there working do you have any desires to step behind the mic yourself and and start 
really yeah. out there. Let's talk about that. Because <laughs> the production is amazing. And I, I, I like those triple threats. I don't know what the third threat would be. So yeah, double threats. But, but talk, I, let's talk about it. For sure. I've wanted to get into songwriting a little bit. Um, I, you know, like like every young tortured emo saw, I used to write a lot of poetry <laughs> back in the day and also um, was just a huge English nerd in general. So I feel like um, I want to channel a little bit of the pen this year. Um, and I actually plan on uh, working on an EP uh, with some hopefully some surprise collaborations. But check that out. That's going to be coming out soon, hopefully um, by early next year. So working on that right now. Um, and yeah, you know, if the, if the mic bug hits me and I end up in the studio, I won't be mad at it. Maybe, maybe I'll put some bars down, but really want to stick to some pen writing, you know? Hey, that, and that's where the money is at anyway. So yeah, truly get those publishing chats. I didn't seen so many dope singers and I'm like, are you, are you working at? Are you working at the coffee shop right, right. now? And they're like, hey man, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got a role for right. sixteen years. So I'm like, hey, I understand the music business is a grind. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, it sure is. So before we get into the super fun part that that everyone loves, before we get into the super fun part, we always like to, as I mentioned, the show is all about peace, love, unity, respect, but we're also all about inspiring people. So as a young, and I hate to use the tag female, but as a young female producer who's just dope for any sets, what advice would you give to any artist? Because you mentioned it's been over a year, you fell in love with it, and now look where you're at. So it doesn't take a long time if you have that passion. Mm -hmm. But what advice would you give any artist, male, female, whatever, the pronoun, that may have a little nervousness in stepping Mm -hmm. in this music game? Because it's a very scary Mm-hmm. Scary game. It's 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 not for the faint of heart. What advice would you give for that artist that's that's yeah. ready to take that next step and, and and make it their their passion? Absolutely. So I myself, um, I actually do identify as non-binary. So it's funny that you know we bringing up gender here, um, and it's scary because like ninety seven percent of the of the music producers are actually men. Yeah. So you know what does it take to really be like, well, I'm, I'm going to be that different, whatever percent and just like jump into it. And I love the quotation that's like, you know, Sephora already had their brand and you know what Rihanna said, I'm going to make Fenty anyway. Mm. And she said, I'm going to put my makeup line out there and look now Fenty is like selling out everywhere. Right. So I think my dad has some, everybody has, some. everybody she, has. Some you don't Fenty. need to make an album ever again. If she don't want, that's to. right. She that's might. right. <laughs> I think the most important thing is one, you have to believe in yourself. You have like, that's the most important thing. You have to believe that there is something out there that you can offer that is um, just a little bit different or something that people haven't heard before. Because guess what? No one can make melodies like you. No one can write the lines like you do. So at at the core, you're already a unique person. Right. And then second of all, I think the most important thing is collaboration. Like that's what I've been learning in my first year. Um, so whenever you see a show that's something local in your area, make sure you go to these open mics, like go to these bars and like listen to the sounds of these artists who maybe they don't even have that big of a following on social media, right? But you talk to them and you say, hey, let's let's do a song together. This is what I can do. What do you, what do you want to bring to the table? Because I feel like making connections is the most important part. That's how you learn. You learn from other people. So that's the number one encouragement. Um, or sorry, first one is you got to believe in yourself. Number two is you got to make really genuine connections and just be a genuine person. And then number three, practice your craft. You got to practice your craft. That's three for three. I need you on our Lakers because we suck. Uh, <laughs> but you, but you, uh, you went three for three. That is some of the wisest words spoken. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Listen to kids. She's absolutely right. And I always say uh, one of my favorite lines is from a Jay-Z song. He said, this is one of one, meaning none before me and none to come. We're mm. all one of one. We're all mm-hmm. unique. So we have an advantage right now. I see so many artists that they see what's popping on the radio right now and they try to emulate it. And I'm like, you will never be as good at little baby at being little baby. That's right. He's already him. So you can't, right. you can't be him. But 
your story and I feel the artists that stand the test of time that are legends, they're all unique. They're all Absolutely. one of one. So I, yeah, you're right there. Listen, you're right there. Jay-Z and Beyonce said it right, one of one. I know you were sent to Renaissance, right? She said <laughs> unique. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> let, let, let me tell you, I, I, I live in a household that if I don't listen to Beyonce like, oh, the, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be problems. And I don't I don't <laughs> want smoke. I don't want problems. I want peace, serenity. That's what I'm about. So that's right. now comes the incredible part of the interview that I don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. We're going to play a little game and it's called If You Don't Know. Now you know, baby, baby. Shout out to the late, great, notorious B.I.G. who inspired this game. And now I have to do the plug. This game was brought to you by the good folks at Poddex. Podcasters, if you're tired of asking the same damn interview questions, where you're from, what do you like to eat? Poddex is the app for you. I've been doing this podcast game for a while now, and I've seen so much growth, so much expansion since I started using Poddex. So, what I'm going to do for you guys today, I'm going to get you a little discount because I'm all about the deals. Get 10% off on Poddex with the discount code The Den. That's T H E D E N. My editor will put it right here, right over my gray beard. So, T H E D E N. Get yourself 10% off of Poddex. So, now that I got this plug out the way, are you ready to play the game? I'm ready. All right. So, I'm going to give you the rules. We have four categories that have been pre-selected for you and you're going to pick a category and then you're going to pick a number one through five and we're going to get a randomly generated question i don't know what it's going to say i don't know what it's going to be but it's going to be fun and it's going to let the people really know about kidding it. <laughs> so are you ready i'm ready okay so these are the categories i'm going to let you uh in on those categories and you tell me which one you want to go first all right so they're deal breakers also known as red flags. <laughs> There's music, obviously. There's this or that. And then the final category is WTF. And you know what that stands for. So hmm. which one do you want to tackle first? No, let's do red flags because that made me laugh. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is deal breakers slash, slash red flags. Okay. Give me a number one through five. Ooh, let's do one. One on one, right? Let's do one. All right. This is easy. Excessively vain. Is that a red flag deal breaker? Excessively vain? Excessively. And then, you know, yeah. they're like, oh, I'm so beautiful. I'm so. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's a, that's an easy one. And, and, Absolutely. And you notice the vain, the people that are most vain have no reason to be that vain. You're like, what? None. None. Who, 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 told, who gave you too many hugs? I'm always right. going for, you know, a lot of hugs and making the kids have the most positive childhood. But someone gave you too much confidence. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not to be confused with confidence, but just excessively. Confident, confident never cocky. That's what I always say. You Thank can you. always be confident, but never cocky. Thank you. All right. All right. So that's one for one. Easy peasy. Uh, you have WTF left. You have um, music left. And you have this or that. Which one do you want to tackle? Let's do this or that. This or that. Okay. And let me get a number. One through five. Uh, three. Three. One, two, three. All right. Okay. This is, a, this is a good one. Would you rather receive gift cards or actual gifts and why? Oh, man. That's a hard one, right? That's a hard one. I know that people think that, like, gift cards are the some of the worst gifts that you can get people. But if it's like a useful gift card, I, I personally like gift cards. I'm not going to lie. Of course, a gift takes a lot more effort. And because you have to, if you give a good gift, that means you're a good listener. That means you heard what I said. Right. And you're like, I know you and I got this for you. Or you, you just have a good brain with that stuff. <sighs> no, nah, I'm going to say a gift. I'm going to say a gift. Sorry. Sorry okay. to the gift card people. I'm going to go with gift. I want a good gift. You know what? If this was drink champs, I'd probably take a shot on that. But I'm going to agree with you because as much the reason I like gift cards is because I used to get terrible gifts. No one would listen to me. No one would pay attention. Uh, I'm like, I'm really simple. It has something to do with comic books, music, mm -hmm. 
or, you know, food, I'm sold. And people will be like, here's some socks. And I'm like, dude, I don't even wear socks. I wear Crocs all the time, 24-7. So those you don't listen to me. They don't listen. So a good gift, that touches your heart. It doesn't even have to be expensive. I remember I got gifted an extra phone charger and I almost cried. Because oh. because I was complaining about not, I like to have a charger in every single room. And I was complaining, oh, I need one more charger. The one from five below broke. And they got me a charger. And I was like, you listen, you really you listen. See? And it's because you, you look at that charger and you be like, damn, Sam got me that charger. As opposed to the yeah. gift card, you just, it's gone. It's gone. And back in the day, I don't, I don't, I, I, I'm an 80s baby. So back in the day, I grew up when gift cards would have a time limit. You get it in uh, September. Mm-hmm. And by December, $30 was already gone if you had <laughs> spent it. So it was a con. All right. So we have two more categories left. Um, we have music, of course, and we have, I forgot the other category. Um, we did this or that. We did um, deal breakers. We have WTF and music. That's what we have left. All right. Let's do WTF. All right. All right. Give me a number one through five. Four. Four. All right. Three. Four. Okay. All right. I hope you answer right on this. Would you ever pick up a hitchhiker? I don't think so, man. Not in this economy. Not in 2022. Nah. Mm. Hell to the no. No, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I will call an Uber for you and and let them pick you up if you're really desperate. But I, I, I can't do it. It's funny. Growing up, my mom used to pick up a hitchhiker. Every day taking me to school. I'm hoping it was a hitchhiker and not my mom's side, man. You know what? I'll edit that out because it's just it's just coming back. And I'm like, you know what? what you know what's wild is that I actually almost needed to become a hitchhiker like a couple of weeks ago. I was out somewhere and my car broke down in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, damn, this is really the predicament. And it's, it's 10 o'clock. Yeah, it, it's scary. And let me tell you, a tow company... They're going to be out there when they get out there. You, you know, you'll be out there at three nice. in the morning and they may cancel on you. Correct. I was, listen, I was here in animal sounds. I don't usually hear because I'm from the Bronx. So I was like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I, I'm born and raised in VA. So we have all types of wildlife. Ooh. But I, like I said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a homebody. I'm not a go outside and venture, go in the woods. That's their turf. Y'all don't come in my house. I won't go to your house. So. I'm with you. Whenever I hear, I'm like, oh, no. Nope. Oh, hell no. I'm out of here. I'm oh, out what the here. hell is that? I'm not going to be that guy in a horror movie. Don't like, catch Billy? me. Is no. that you? <laughs> Billy is still standing there. I'm gone. Okay. I'm gone. I'm gonna, I'll, my famous thing is you never have to worry about me That's in, right. in, a, uh, in a situation where curiosity killed the cat because I'm going to find out on the news. I'm like, damn, they were shooting that office. That's, That's right. crazy. I was That's already wild. at home. I was already Sorry at home to Billy. Yeah. Sorry to Billy. <laughs> Sorry to Billy, but it's not going to be the kid. All right. So the final category music. on this on this fantastic game is music. The one that, that touches the heart the most. Give me a number one through five. Let's do five. All right. Perfect. Three, four, and five. All right. This is interesting. What's your opinion on fans wearing a band's shirt when going to see them play? Is it corny or is it cool? No, I think it's kind of cool. I like it. I think it could be a way to show off like merch that you've accumulated throughout the years, some classic stuff. You could make fire outfits out of anything. So I'm here for it. Facts. And and you know what? They're coming to sell like vintage Guns N' Roses four shirts or or my favorite band of all time is Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I went to see Uh. them in Philadelphia. And I was decked out. I they could they I didn't have the best seats, but I was decked out. I had the hat, I had the jacket, I had the shirt, and this was just all merch I'd accumulated over the years. So I was ready to go. So I agree. Merch, I love it. Thumbs up I, on merch. Yeah, I just purchased like I've been going to you know concerts slowly again. And I just picked up a piece from Tiana Taylor's concert. It's like a, a expensive piece of tour merch. I'm not gonna lie, but it's like. Now I hold this and I treasure it. It's something I can even pass down if I wanted to. And she and she autographed on the back. So like, oh hell yeah, yeah. That, that's a yeah. that's a no brainer right there. Shout out to Kevin yeah, Taylor, so underrated, oh, God. phenomenal artist. I and and Kevin Feige, if you're looking at this, which you're probably not, but if you want to do a Madam Slay, 
for Black Panther 3, Tiana Taylor is the one to cast. That's so right. You see that happen. You That's see me right. here person down in the den. I want my money. I want my ducats. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, kid, we're done. Fan. Great. Fantastic. This was amazing. You are phenomenal. Phenomenal talent, great personality. Thank you so much for blessing the den mates and the friends of the den. With that, of course, we're going to add you to our uh, den mate group chat. As I mentioned, we have a ton of phenomenal artists, hip hop, soul, R and B, and we're a family. We're not just a podcast. We're a family. We support the artists big time, whatever they do. So you'll see whenever you post something, you're going to see our page posting it, giving that support. Because you'd be surprised. People won't even post your music. I'm like, you're my brother. And they're like, I was busy. I'm like, no, you weren't. You were you were liking ass shaking videos. Just 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 post my stuff. So we're gonna make sure that we post anytime you want to come in uh to the den and and promote a product, whatever you want to do, you're promoting, you always have a home here. So please let the friends of the den know where they can find you on social media. Um, any business uh, connects you want to give out you, and any shout outs you want to give out, the floor is yours. You've earned it. Absolutely. So if you want to hear more of my music or see more of my content, you can follow me on Instagram. That is at Kid Nick Beats. Also I have a TikTok. You can follow me at Kid Nick Music on my TikTok. Also, please go stream World Tour is my single that I put out with Love Child. Want to give her all the shout and love to all the songwriting and singing on that. Um, and of course, uh, I just want to thank you, first of all. Uh, Mars, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm very excited to be connected to more Den mates. Um, and of course, I want to give a shout out to all of my friends and my family who have supported me and encouraging me to do production in the last two years. Thank you so, so much. You all know who you are. Uh, sending so much love. Thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Well, it. This has been fantastic. I I love when I have, sometimes we get the people, and I love all my den mates, but sometimes we get the people that are dry. They give you those one word answers and you're like, oh oh my God, I I didn't want to be a dentist. I didn't want to pull a teeth today, but you are phenomenal. Uh, You're a light. So thank you so much. Please, the song is World Tour. Please check that out. What's the artist's name again? We want to give her her, uh, her love child. Love, love child. child. Is it L U V? L U V C H I L D. Go check her out. That's how I would spell it. So please check out Love Child production. We're all by uh, Kid Nick and guys. We thank you so much for tuning in. This this is the number one podcast. We're we're batting a thousand with some of these creative artists that we bring to you. So guys, please check out follow the social media. Um, follow everything they're doing. And as they always say on every single YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. You know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe. And we end every episode the same damn way. It's peace, it's love, it's unity, and it's respect. Deuces.